Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to another Subitis video. And there was a big round of updates and changes, as well as the end of season announcement, which means we only have four weeks now to go after those transmogs and mounts and titles that we so desire before they will be gone forever. So I wanted to update my melee DPS tier list so that this would be most useful to those of you looking to push for your goals on the ladder, which of these specs are going to be the most likely to achieve those goals, and maybe give you some composition and options on specs that might not be the top performers, but may have a chance given those compositions. So without further ado, let's get started. We've got the Arms Warrior. The specialization has unfortunately fallen from glory um, with the defensive stance nerfs during this patch. Its survivability is a lot more in balance compared to a lot of the other melee DPS, which is why you're going to feel inferior um, up against some of the other specs in terms of durability. However, I do recommend that you try to play Rek Paladin, Resto Druid, and Arms Warrior as your composition to push as this spec. I think it is the most likely to succeed, although you will probably have a bit of an easier time going to Fury. In some situational cases, you'll actually feel better being Arms, but Arms is definitely going to be held back a bit here in this patch, putting it about middle of the pack. It's a, it's a solid spec with great utility, um, but there's other classes that are kind of just on this immortality level, which you're just not able to achieve at the moment. Uh, now, moving on to Assassination Rogue, you are going to bring in insane one-shot damage. Um, you're going to have an easy time carrying your team if you know how to set up your burst damage with sepsis as assassination. I do recommend playing with a shadow priest and a restoration shaman at this time. This way the shadow priest as night fae will be able to enable you to reduce the cooldown of your vendetta, allowing you to get these big spiky burst windows and carry the team to victory. And I think because of its ability to like hard carry in these burst moments and end the game single-handedly, it does put it slightly above that of the tier that the arms warrior is currently on, although its survivability is probably more closely in line with it, which prevents it from going on to the S tier, which I'm kind of like deeming the immortality tier almost. Uh, now moving on to Enhancement Shaman. This specialization, unfortunately, since the uh, buffs of Fury Warrior or nerfs of Fury Warrior may be struggling a little bit more, but I don't think it's too dramatic. I still see Turbo Cleave at the top of the ladder, that being Fury Warrior, Enhancement Shaman, and a Healer. You can pair this with almost any healer at the moment, Holy Priest, Holy Paladin, or Resto Druid. Um, and I see a lot of teams having success with that so i would still recommend the turbo cleave for you if you're going to run an enhancement shaman and you want to start getting maybe the elite transmog or pushing towards your gladiator mount uh and such and i feel like enhancement shaman is probably better than arms warrior its healing is through the roof like it, it's its ability to support and top the damage meter is exceptionally high so i think it's above arms warrior but in about on the same on assassination uh, you won't have the same kind of like hard carry as assassination to end the game but you'll be able to sustain matches and support your team way more than the assassination rogue can and that's kind of the strengths and weaknesses that are holding them back from getting up into the s tier at the moment feral druid this specialization paired up with jungle cleave hunter received a couple of nerfs here with the craven stratagem but i still think jungle cleave is in a phenomenal position you can play with survival of bm hunter um or a marksmanship hunter if you really want to but that'd probably be my third recommendation BM being the first one and survival being the second if you want to start pushing the ladder with this specialization it is highly durable one of the most difficult specs to kill in the game you're gonna have carry windows during your berserk cooldown applying your force set bonus sickle of the lion this is the moment that you always want to be looking to set up for baiting cooldowns with your feral frenzy prior to this or baiting cooldowns with crowd control and then committing for a really big hit with your berserk is going to be where your moments are found I think because its survivability is so much more uh, tremendously high than our warrior that does put it a tier above it i would argue it's close to immortality tier especially when you're considering 3v3 uh, but i don't think it's quite there it's probably the best of the a tier specializations though so if we look at the tree like this left means it's the best of that tier and then on the right would mean it's the worst of that tier in terms of competitive viability now we've got the frost death knight we don't really see a lot of these. Your best option is likely going to be Frost, Death Knight, Demon Hunter, um, Resto Shaman, playing like this all-in aggressive cleave comp can work really effectively towards kind of the lower mid-range part of the ladder. So if you're pushing for these kind of like earlier rewards, maybe you want the weapon enchant or you want um, an elite transmog as a Death Knight, you can you can probably easily do it as a, a Frost Death Knight paired with a Demon Hunter, but I think it does fall a little bit flat right now probably middle of the pack, although it has its niche that you can have some impacts with it. When you start getting to the upper echelons of the ladder, I think you start to notice that it has like a drastic strength and a drastic weakness that is going to limit you, but it still brings a lot of self-sustainability with self-healing and the big burst windows that you expect from Frost Death Knight. 
Fury Warrior. Fury Warrior did receive some nerfs, but I still think it is a monster spec. You've got Turbo Cleave, you've got Ret Warrior, you've got a lot of options to flex between uh, at the highest end of the ladder. If you're playing with a Holy Priest, it's going to make you even more tankier, having your Enraged Regen reduced by the Night Fae Covenant and by the Symbols of Hope. Uh, so you're going to have a lot of cooldown reduction towards your power. Your Conqueror's Banner is still a massive swing of damage. I don't... I feel like I'm a bit hesitant to put it onto S tier, but at the same time kind of want to. I'm not sure if only maybe one of these or two of these specs should really be on S tier at the moment, or maybe we should just drop everything down a tier. If we drop everything down a tier, then things start to become more clear. Um, so if we put Fury Warrior here onto the A tier, um, and we drop everybody down a peg, so that way it's not just all stacking up on one row. Although I think Arms and Frost definitely have strong potential. I think you'll notice the difference um, between these other specs, especially based on their popularity and their comp diversity, um, and their ability to succeed because of that. But with Fury Warrior, Ret Warrior Turbo is going to be your go-to. It's still a really good spec, even despite the nerfs. Havoc Demon Hunter, uh, much the same as the Frost Death Knight. Your best comp at the moment, I think, is Balanced Druid, um, Rest of Shaman. You can play Holy Priest with this comp as well, or Mistweaver. Um, and you're going to be running the Boomkin Demon Hunter, setting up CC on the healer and burst damage on your kill target. Uh, that's probably going to be your best bet, although an easier comp to play, I think, is Demon Hunter Death Knight. Uh, and you can kind of just run teams down similarly to what I recommended with the Frost Death Knight. Um, I, where do I want to put Demon Hunter, though? I think it's kind of middle of the pack um, at the moment, probably right behind feral druid at the moment um, with that one comp option but you really are going to struggle into a lot of the outlaw rogue teams getting through all their crowd control lockdown and then dodge effects is going to be really difficult towards the mid and upper parts of the ladder but on the lower side of the ladder if you're just trying to get an elite set mod with this it's definitely doable and easily achievable Outlaw Rogue, this really goes with no discussion. Even despite the nerfs, this spec is just unpunishable and continues to remain the most invincible spec, probably even more so than Arms Warrior was in the previous patches, which made it a really frustrating spec to fight at the time, which is why it received justifiable nerfs to put it into a position where it's kind of has strengths and weaknesses. Outlaw just does not have any weaknesses at the moment. I would recommend that you run RMP with this, obviously, Fire Mage, Holy Priest, um, but you do have other options. I'm seeing Outlaw Rogues playing with Death Knights, with Rep Paladins, with Demonology Warlocks, so it's obviously that it also has some flexibility but because the spec has always been so niche and obscure not a lot of players have found a lot of time on it and put a lot of hours into it um, so it's a little bit less popular but it does not mean that its performance is lacking due to its lack of popularity it is it is the top performing spec at the moment in my mind when it comes to arena and if you play the comps that i've suggested you are likely to have a good run ret paladin uh, did receive some nerfs recently, but it is still killing it at the moment. Ret Warrior is easily one of the best comps in the game. Um, just running down your target, just mowing them down with burst damage, constantly having wings up, constantly having Seraphim proccing is really enabling Ret Paladin to just truck out insane damage outside of its typical wings window. So you're going to dominate the battlefield for this. I think that Ret Paladin and Fury Warrior are pretty close to each other, although maybe Fury Warrior's flexibility to more comps is going to give you more options in LFG if you're trying to climb an LFG. Um, but if you're able to focus just on Ret Warrior specifically, yeah, a Rep Paladin is definitely going to shine, definitely going to smash everybody in the competition. Subtlety Rogue, this is a spec where you are just highly niche spec. If you can't play RMP and you don't know how to do the setups with RMP, you will not succeed with the spec. But if you do know how to do the setups with RMP, you know how to get every, sing every single thing going, then you're going to be at the top of the ladder killing it, just owning every single team. So this is kind of the caveat that I lead to this. It's not like the Ret Warrior where you can just log in and kind of like throw around your cooldowns and, and roll people over. You need to have an exact game plan, know what you're doing in all situations. So this spec is going to be a lot more difficult to climb with than Assassination or Outlaw because of this but if you do achieve that you are going to be getting towards the top i think that does maybe prevent me from wanting to put subtlety onto s tier i also don't think that it's as immortal as outlaw rogue um, you can catch subtlety rogues in bad positions and crush them so it's limitations in comp um, and its survivability being lower than outlaw brings it down a tier but by only having one comp as well prevents it from going up to s tier survival hunter best comp is going to be with a feral druid although you can maybe play with a shadow priest i've seen shadow priest hunter creeping up a little bit more on the ladder but a main recommendation would be feral survival hunter uh, and holy priest and just bringing in massive damage with the stun trap combinations the classic combo of this class uh, is going to be what you're wanting to do it does have its compositions pretty limited i'd say it's probably middle of the pack maybe around where assassination and enhancement shaman is uh right now in between the two kind of sandwiched there maybe a little bit above assassin at the rogue because i don't really see assassin 
row nearly as much. So just behind Demon Hunter, maybe above Demon Hunter, there's really tough lines there to draw between them. And then Unholy Death Knight. This is a specialization that is killing it now. This is definitely the patch to be Unholy. You can play with Demonology Warlocks. You can play with Warriors. You can play with Outlaw Rogues. You can play with pretty much anything at the moment, really. I would recommend Demonology Warlock, though. Um, Demonology, Unholy, and Holy Priest is a really popular comp right now. Kind of just smash through with massive damage with Abomination's Limb as well as the Demonic Tyrant. I would actually feel confident right now in putting Unholy Death Knight towards the S tier, although it's definitely not as good as Outlaw Rogue, um, but its survivability against spell casted damage is even higher than that of, of Outlaw Rogue, uh, and with the comp options that you have at the moment, I, I definitely think you'll be able to see some success with the specialization. Um, if you're towards the lower end of the ladder, maybe with a Demon Hunter and just running cleaves and kind of rolling your way through would be a better way to climb, though, if you're just looking for lower end elite transmog rewards um, and not the rank one push. Windwalker still brings in a huge crack of damage. Um, but again, it's it's not on a tier where it's invincible. And right now, if there are specs that are invincible and don't have weaknesses defensively, those are the most desirable because you can just last until dampening is high enough that the other team just falls over because you can't die. So Windwalker is not in that position. It, it was at some points in the expansion um, by using its mobility to constantly get away from engagements rather than kind of just staying in like Outlaw does at the moment. Um, but because it's not onto that tier of invincibility, it's, it's going to be held back a bit, but it still has massive damage, can still climb, can still get these achievements especially on the lower end of the ladder if you're just trying to go after an elite transmog for sure would recommend at the moment likely frost death knight or unholy death knight with this specialization um, and just kind of rolling through as a cleave if you're looking to just try and climb through the ladder but you can pair up with a caster um, if you want to try with a shadow priest a mage or a moonkin or something like that but it'll be a little bit harder to play where do we want to put the windwalker monk at the moment on this tier list though um, I'm thinking about wanting to rearrange this a little bit. I think Enhancement is slightly better than Assassination with Turbo Cleave as an option. And then Windwalker is probably like really close behind. Remember that the difference between here and here is not very much. Um, and mostly it's because of the popularity of these specs. I think that can hold them back for you achieving success with them um, than necessarily their specs specifically. Maybe even arms actually might just feel it's pretty close. They're they're pretty close, but again, it's a popularity thing. Um, Unholy is just more consistent in between goes um, than Frost, which I think opens up more options for it at the moment. Um, and it's synergies with things like Demonology Warlock. But other than that, this is it for my tier list here for the final last month of 9.2. Um, and we're going to have to wait and see what happens here moving forward into the next season, see if there's any more changes. It doesn't look like there are any right now, but what types of changes would you like to see made to the game? Do you think that we should be bringing down the survivability of the specs that just have limited, limitless defense? Defense, even despite the fact that they might not be the most popular and represented um, just for the sake of game balance um, and good feels of the matches uh, or do you think it's better to leave the specializations like this even if they are less popular let me know in the comments down below and i hope that this video was helpful to you if it was please hit the subscribe button it's going to be greatly appreciated and make sure that content is just going to be notified to you so you never miss a beat and stay ahead of the competition uh, other than that thank you very much for watching the video and i will catch you in the next one